Hey YouTube, Mike here. How are we all doing today? I hope you all had a safe and productive week and we're all being safe out there. All right, today's video is actually going to be on a code 15, which means that the Venturi gas valve has malfunctioned on a Renai unit. Now, the unit that you're going to find this gas valve on is either going to be an RU, an RUR, or a CU, or also the CHS199 Demand Duo that has a CU on the front of the 119 or 80 gallon tank. You're not going to find these on a V, an RL, or the older RU, RUR units that um, they're not the Sensei. Alrighty, so what is this? This is a self-adjusting gas valve. It's like a single barrel carburetor. And it mounts into the upper right-hand corner of the unit. And what you'll find is this is the exact assembly when you remove it from the unit. So what you see here is what I'm holding here in my hand, the, the middle part. The fan and the air intake tube has to be removed, cleaned, and reused. Now, I will show you. This is the actual sealed part, and it is a 106-000-117. It'll all be in the description below. This is, this is the actual replacement part. But in some cases, <clears throat> you're going to have to um, clean it. Now, one of the reasons that I'm doing this video is last week, I had seven of these in one week. I had two on one house for the whole day and then the rest that week. So they are susceptible from getting fouled up if you're near water, especially salt water. Now, the funny thing is I mentioned to engineering that it's funny that a Japanese company, because these are from Japan, that's an island surrounded by salt water, made this and still hasn't come up with one that doesn't foul. Now, here in Florida, we could even be what they call on the intercoastal, and this thing fouls up. And this week so far, I've done three more. But then some weeks we do none, or some months we do none. It just depends. All right. So, enough with the banter talking. All right. So, what you're going to have here, there's three wires that are actually on the unit but you're gonna to have to remove another series of wires. Now, if you go back in my video about changing a Venturi, I actually have a unit that is being pulled out. But again, I don't want you know to lose focus on what we're doing with cleaning this one. So, you have this wire right here, okay, which is a white, yellow, black, and red that is powering the fan. Then across that wire, on the same clip, you're going to have a white wire, a double white wire that goes to the sensor, the, the, the um, temperature sensor in the actual vent. Then you're going to have a yellow wire, which is the set flame sensor, and then the black igniter wire. You have to remove them because they're, they're in the way. You're, you're going to end up breaking it. Just remove it. And let them hang down. Then you have the wire here that is powering the motor. And then you have the wire here that's powering the gas valve. And again, those are the little push and pull down. And you, again, these are the wires. They only go back into their mated part. All right. Then you have, and I circled. You're going to have to remove those three screws, the, bl the black circles. Can we see them? Yep. That one, that one, and that one. That will now remove this fan from the actual unit. And then you're gonna to need to remove the gas valve. It's a bent stainless steel tube. Now, again, before you do anything, you're gonna to need to shut the power off and shut the gas off, all right? You don't need to shut the water. Shut the power, shut the gas. 
So then you're going to remove the gas screw and those three screws. And then you're going to manipulate this out. And it does come out. It appears that it's, it doesn't, but it's going to come out. It comes out. Once you take the first one or two of them out, you, you'll be fine. All right. So now you have this unit. Now, what you see here is what I use to repair this. I keep one of these um, boards on my truck, and this, this has the automotive um, material like you find on top of a, a, a work cart that you can get oil and grease and all, and it doesn't eat through it because you're going to need brake cleaner and you're going to need gun oil I've the everyone that I've cleaned and when we when this first started happening I started took these back after replacing them and tested and worked on them and I keep two those and they're marked in boxes that say they've been cleaned a lot of the times I can't clean them because they're just so far gone they're on the ocean there's so much salt there and, and salt residue in there I just it can't be cleaned but in you might have to if you don't have the part all right use gun oil i use lucas gun oil why explosive area gun oil explosive area and then brake fluid is a great cleaner plus it evaporates very fast doesn't leave any residue i happen to use o'reilly it's just what i have now this is not i carry a much smaller one on my truck but i ran out of it so this, I only had a big one here in the studio. So, <coughs> excuse me. So I usually just carry a small one because I, you don't need a lot. You just need a little bit. All right, I carry, I bring with me a 300 millimeter number two laser etched tip. We are a screwdriver. I bring this tool check. We are a socket set. You're going to need a 7 and an 8 millimeter extension ratchet. And in case I do need to bring, uh, uh, use the Phillips. I bring a set of picks because there are gaskets that you're going to have to remove and replace. So I bring a set of picks. I bring gun swabs, a whole pack of them because they're great to get down. You'll see in a second. Then, of course, I bring a pair of tweezers. Then I bring a 7 and an 8 millimeter nut driver by Weera. And then I bring this end nose pliers. And you'll see why in a minute. These things are the slice white bread. And I'll show you why in a second has got me out of a ton of problems. And they're, they are um, an 8201-200 Nipex. They're about 40 bucks. But when you see what we use these for, you, they're indispensable. All right. And then I also have a nylon gun brush. Don't use a brass. Don't use a steel. Use a nylon gun brush to clean off the residue. All right, so now, oh, and I normally set up my um, DeWalt table. We all carry them, but for today, I'm not gonna do that. And let me just move this over before I trip. Oh, oh, uh -oh. I also have my kit. My This is my conversion kit. I keep it in a mini sautena, and it has my conversion pieces. Plus, it has all the extra screws. So the screws that I'm going to be removing and plates, I have extra that I salvaged from old units. And again, and today, no cigar because we're going to be messing with this stuff. All right. So you remove the screw, 7 millimeter, and then there's a plate. And I will show you what I mean. This is the plate. And now you'll see why I have the tweezers. They also get the moths out of the fan. And that is the screw. Seven millimeter 
and it's got that starter uh, tip on it. That's what's going to remove the gas. Now, the screws for the fan are 8 millimeter, and they're a stainless steel screw. They also have a Phillips. That's just, those are three of them. Now, in the kit, you get or everything except those screws, so don't lose them. Have your magnetic tray around so you can put the stuff in it. I just put the stuff back into this box here, so I know, because they're each assorted. All right, so the first thing you want to do, and I like to work on it this way, where the gas valve is away from me and this is towards me. First thing I want to do is remove the air intake tube. Now, as you remove this stuff, clean it. So the first thing you're removing here is your air intake tube. Grab yourself, don't use, you don't need to put any of the uh, oil or anything in there. Just get in there and swab it out. You see, see the dirt that's in there? Now this, this here, you know, the Venturi is out of an old unit that I salvaged, but this Venturi here was one of them that I replaced this week. So you want to get your swab in there, then you want to take, you're going to have some rags with you, get in there, and get in there with the swab. You don't need to push it through, just get in there, pull it out, you can get you, and you're going to find the most debris on that side, the side with the two screws. So get your fingers in there, clean this out, then get your swab in there. Move it around, get it out, blow it out. Now your tube is clean, put it on the side. You don't need to worry about that tube later. Okay, now, you need to remove four screws here. One, two, three, four. Now, these screws, depending on, you know, how, how long it's been in there, you might need to use the seven millimeter with extension and the ratchet. And these things, this Weira, these Weira tools, are the best on the market. They are snap-on quality at their, at very inexpensive price. So you might want to use the ratchet to get them out. Or in this case, you could do it with, and I see, look at this, I already lost the screw. Ah. But I'm saying 90 some odd percent of the time we're getting these screws out with this laser tip screwdriver. Now, if you happen to lose one of these four screws, you get four extra. Now we're going to open up the actual Venturi to show you what you're going to get in the box. So now, you take your four screws out. Now you can mix up these four screws with the screws that you took the air intake off. They're the same screws. Now there are alignment ports or alignment tabs on the fan so that you can align the piece back in. So now you got your fan. You're going to take your pick and you're going to pick out the o-ring because you're going to get a new o-ring put that on the side take your nylon brush and clean off the top of the fan 
clean off the inside where the groove is. We're not going to go through the whole process like we do. And then check for rotation. See how it rotates. You want to get in here too with the rag. Clean this inside out. Clean off the face of this. Take your nylon brush. Clean the face. There's a gasket that's sitting there on the fan. That you don't get. But that gasket, I've never had a problem with. So now your fan is all... If you happen to have a compressor, blow it out. All right, so now your fan is clean. Now your Venturi. So, you want to... Let me just make sure which Venturi is which. Yep, here, this... Yep, this is the one. Let's put this here. All right, now, the Venturi. You need to remove... You can see, I'll show you the inside of it. See how dirty it is? <coughs> that's not that bad, but that's how dirty it is. All right, the first thing you want to do is you need to remove the motor. You don't want to be messing with this thing while the motor is on because you do not want to break this motor. It's got all plastic gears in it. Pretty strong motor. You know, it's a 12 volt, but you want to remove the motor. Now those screws are machine screws. They're seven millimeter and they have a lock washer on them. So now, what I do is I have the gas valve facing me, the motor to my right, the Venturi to my left. Because you do not want to rotate this Venturi more than a quarter of a turn. Because if you do, there is a shaft way in here with this locator piece and it'll jump. You're going to have to take it all apart and reposition it. So the first thing you want to do is try this with the pliers. Get it moving. Okay, I got it to move. Now with your fingers, so let's get some of this stuff away because we're going to need to start doing the brake fluid. Now I'm going to reposition this camera so you could see better and you'll just hear me talking. And I'll move it around so you can see it. So you want to get at least two or three cleaner um, swaps. Shake up, shake them up, shake them up, shake them up, shake them up. And then just give this a little shot. Now, holding the shaft way. See, I'm holding the shaft way. Get your swab and get down in there and start going along the wall. Look at that. See how dirty it is? These are so inexpensive. Don't worry, you know, if you're going to use a few. Just get in there, holding the shaft. You don't want the shaft to move. Get in there, give it another little shot. Don't go crazy, just a little bit. That was even like too much. Now, again, you want eye protection and if you want wear some type of you know the surgical gloves clean it clean it clean it clean it again look how dirty now you want to start moving it this one here I wouldn't have I would I would definitely have replaced this one all right so now 
you got this all clean now you want to rotate this this way so now that the gas valve is away from you still being able to hold on to the shaft way another shot of two and clean the top get in there you see get it focused you see I'm not my finger is holding on to the shaft way this way again you're gonna get in there with the swab and swab that out you're getting the idea this is I don't normally doing this in front of a camera like this so now this is all clean now we want to take our nylon brush to the top of this that's where your air intake tube is see this is where you're going where the stuff is actually going to be getting sucked in from you can see the aluminum has been deteriorated from the salt air all right now take your pliers and just move this around Quarter of a turn. So away from you, then back to you. Away from you, back to you. Now take your gun oil and give it, just go, you want to put, you want to put some oil here, here, on the actual shaft, and then we're going to take this plate off, and I'll show you what's back there. So just a little dab of gun oil, a little dab, it'll get in there, and a little dab. And then again, get your pliers. You'll actually hear a clicking. Then leave it open. If you can move this fairly easy with your fingers, you're doing good. All right, now let me zoom back and get the camera back into position. Now you want to remove. Now you're done with the you're done with the brake clean. You want to remove this plate. No drill. Don't use no drill. Just either this Phillips screwdriver, laser etch tip. And it's all, and I have the magnetic piece. Or a Phillips piece that will adapt to the wearer ratchet. Now, remove this. Now again, on this, here I'll show you what the inside of it. See, if you rotate it too much, this piece here spins and it won't go back. You have to loosen it and reposition it. It's a real pain in the ass, so don't do it. You got two locating pins. So you got two um, tap screws and another gasket. Just be careful with that gasket. All right? Now, you want to take some gun oil here. And you want to put a little bit of oil here and a little bit of oil here. You want to put it right. You want to put it right in the shaft way here and here where the shaft goes through. Then that's what's moving the butterfly, right here. You see the butterfly is moving. And it, now you see how easy it is to move with my fingers. Now you want to leave that butterfly in the vertical position. All right. So now. Clean off, clean this all off, you don't want any dust, any of the residue on there. I'll tell you this right now, I change them, because as you, as you can see, it takes me 15 minutes if I don't have to go up on a ladder, or bring a ladder, or a bucket or something, this takes me like 15 minutes to do. 
as you can see it's a lot longer if you have to clean it but if you don't have I we keep six of them we keep two on each truck and two in the shop all right when you're making these screws back up make sure that you know you, you do them evenly and then tighten them down you don't have to go crazy and just it, the locating pins will get them right in there all right all right so now we're in there all right so let's show you what's in um, a box so this is the actual kit right here so what you're gonna get with the kit comes exactly in this box You're going to get the Venturi. The Venturi all come with the propane orifice in it. The red one that says LP. You get a natural gas one so know your gas so you're gonna to have to convert it we're gonna open this one up and I'll show you in a minute so you're gonna to have to convert it you're going to get the gasket for the back of the orifice and the front plate you're gonna get your orifice you're gonna get a gas o-ring and the fan o-ring you're gonna get four screws for the fan and then you're gonna get a very 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 important screw you're going to get if you notice on this on the gas valve there's a test port now this is a self-adjusting gas valve there's no reason to put your manometer on it, but for some reason, they still drill and tap it, and it's open to the gas port. On the new Venturi, the screw has to be installed. It's a screw that has an O-ring on it for, to seal it. So that screw has to be installed if you're swapping it out. Okay? So that's what you get with the kit. Now in some cases, Renai may ask you to return the, vent the old Venturi. And they'll give you a return ticket and everything to send it back. Alright, so let's take off the actual screw and I'll show it to you. See, that's it right there. And that's the screw. It's got a little O-ring. Just make sure, that's one of the first things I do when I'm replacing this, is I put, I open up that package, and I put that screw in there, and then I actually salvage the other screw in case I drop it in the grass. All right, so now let's look at the conversion. Now, I'm going to show you why this tool is so indispensable, this pair of pliers. Brand new units out of the box. We stock the RU, RUR, and the CU in natural gas only. But then we have to convert it, and we have, as you could see, in my kit here, I have a ton of conversion kits. So brand new from Japan to Peachtree City to the distributor, these screws sometimes will not even come out with that we are a screwdriver. So this pliers grabbing that, and my hands are a little slippery from the and then 
pressure and it'll take them right off right off no questions asked now you do deform them that is why I carry again with the tweezers I carry like a dozen of those screws because if you deform them you if they're like no good so the plate has this um, has markings on it I'm going to bring you the plate in a minute now I salvage these plates I have plates I have screws I have gaskets salvage everything from an old unit you never know when you're going to need it so there is the orifice there's that outer gasket wow and I just took this apart and I smell propane the, or, get, the orifice comes out, there's the back gasket, there's the front gasket, and you can see that, get, you see, it's, it's already deformed, so you're going to want to, you're going to want to uh, replace that, but if you happen to have a propane unit, uh, you don't need to touch this, so there's, there's nothing you have to do, it's just that if you have a natural gas, you got to take it apart, you got the new gasket, so there you go, and it goes with, well, just drop the gasket on the floor here, Oh, God. It goes like so. It says LP on the bottom. The other one says NG. Blue NG, red LP. Blue NG, red LP. That's like a song. And then the plate says NG BLU. L-P-R-E-D, right on the front there. So, get your gasket on. Get it in there. Push it down. We don't, you know, like I said, I'm not changing the gasket. Get your screws in. Remember, fingers first. No drill on these. You will mess these things up. This is the only thing you're going to be touching on this. You're not going to take this gas valve apart. If you need to change it, it this is what you're getting right here. All right, let's not get this back together. All right, so now your fan. You're going to put your new gasket in there. Then you're going to get your alignment pins. All right, you see? Gas valve to the right. Fan like around, what would you say that's about 10 o'clock? And that's where the alignment pins fall. Right on that. And you look down, you can see all the holes. So then we're going to put in one screw. Two screws, three. Now a short screwdriver is not really good because it gets in the way of the body. These two screws here, it'll get in the way of the body. Again, you want to tighten these screws in almost like an X pattern until you get them snug. And then tighten them down. Now, you want to put your motor back on, all right? You got your motor. You see here, the motor faces up, almost upside down with the lettering. So don't try to spin this thing, say, oh, the lettering. No, you, you're not going to do that. So it's upside down, just like that. 
You see? And there is a, there's actually a groove in it. Almost like, well, similar to a keyway, but it's not a keyway. You can put the motor on before you put the fan on. Again, don't go super tight. Get both screws tight. And then tighten it up. And you don't need to go crazy with this thing. Plastic. Now, you want to take your, um, your air intake. All right, there's only one way this air intake goes on. You can't go on like that. It's the notch piece. See the notch? Towards your left. And then your last two screws. So if you have no more screws left, you know you did right. So the, I'm working on the website. I haven't figured out a price yet per year, but you'll be able to gain access to all of the videos, every one that I post, it'll probably be at least two a month, if not three a month. All right, so everything is tight. Again, make sure that your plug is in the gas valve, and now you're back together, whether you cleaned it or you replaced it. And now you put this back in the housing, but before you put these screws in, again, go back to my video and look. I always put the gas in first. There's a lot of movement with the gas, but I like to get the gas in first. Then catch those. Catch them first, nice and loose, so that they're aligned. The two alignment pins align up, because these are the two alignment pins right here. This one and that one. You got to screw, screw, and screw. This back screw is a little bit of a pain in the neck, but again, that's why I love this tool. Because it'll reach really far in to get what you need to get. And that's basically it. That is the cleaning and or replacement, but if you have to clean it, that's what you need to do. And everything right now will be dried up. You don't have to worry about it. It's all good now sometimes if you have to replace this i mean excuse me clean it you might have to go back and replace it again it might be like the one that i cleaned two weeks ago i'm gonna have to go back and replace because it's right on the ocean and it's gonna foul up so i'm waiting for um more of these to come in and then i'm gonna go replace it all right youtube um the um, tools, the filter removal tools. I, I'm trying to get someone to make some for me. I, I only have a few left. So I'm going to uh, send out whoever, um, uh, I think I have about six of them. So the next six will go out and then I have to find somebody to make them. I'm going to try to get about two or three hundred of them made because they have become very popular but I'm still in the process. Um, I started a Patreon channel, you know, because um, if you'd like to support this with, you know, cut my, my, my stuff and all, would be greatly appreciated. It'll be in the description below. Part number will be in the description below. The weirdest stuff will be in the description below. And again, brake fluid, uh, brake parts cleaner, not brake fluid, and gun oil. I happen to use this, but you could use pretty much anything. All right, YouTube, if you, uh, my email will be below. If you have a question, just email me or if you want to purchase a tool. Uh, but I'll let you know if, if the last have been cut off as far as uh, tool sale. Okay? All right, YouTube, you all be safe out there. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.